Then you of all people should understand, he said, with more sincerity than I had ever heard. In her own strange way, Rose is trying to protect her. She doesn't want her to make a choice that can't be undone, and regret it for all eternity. Because she doesn't think there's anything she can do to stop her, she gets frustrated, and that comes out as anger towards Bella. That's the simplest explanation I can give you. Well, that and the fact that she thinks you're a complete moron. But you probably hear that all the time, he added wryly. Yeah, she's not exactly subtle. I shook my head, frustrated. Do you think she's ever going to get over it? Will she ever accept Bella, even if she can't accept the choice she's making? Alice seems to think so. But as Rose has no immediate plans to start calling Bella dear little sister, I think it's probably just Alice's unbridled optimism. Comforting, I mumbled. What are brothers for? We sat quietly, both lost in our own thoughts about the future. As we waited for Jasper to finish whatever game he was playing with the wildlife, another anxious feeling started to creep over me. Something felt wrong, and I suddenly wished Alice was there to assure me everything was still okay back home. "'What's up?' Emmett asked, quirking an eyebrow at me. "'Something's not right. I should go back.' "'Edward, you're being paranoid again. Alice told me not to let you freak out.' "'I'm not freaking out. I just... I need to go. Hey, Jazz, he called out dramatically, staring at me with patronizing eyes. Hunting trip's been cut short. Edward misses his girlfriend. Very mature, I muttered, and I never said you two had to leave. You should stay. I was finished anyway. Sure you were, he said sarcastically. Okay, we'll stay. But if I were you, I'd take my time getting home. You know Alice is going to give you a hard time about this. Have fun with that, by the way. Yeah, thanks. I said, rolling my eyes, just as he was trying to convince me to stay a little longer and join him for a dual attack. My cell phone went off. I looked at it, feeling another swell of nerves as I saw Alice's name. What's wrong? I answered. She disappeared again. She said, her voice shaking. I thought she understood that the moment she crosses path with those animals, she's with the wolves. I screamed, my thoughts racing at the trouble she could already be in. Emmett's eyes widened, and he nodded in understanding as I took off running. "'I didn't see her leave, but it's the only explanation,' Alice continued, as the trees blurred into a sea of green. "'It must not have been premeditated, though. It all happened so fast. One second she was at work, and the next there was nothing. I went straight to Newton's, and they said she had been given the day off. I went by her house, and her truck was gone. She's down there, Edward, and neither one of us can do anything about it.' "'Why didn't you call me right away?' I asked desperately. I hoped I could catch her before she crossed the line. I'm so sorry. I felt myself start to shake, fear taking over. She didn't have a cell phone, so I couldn't call her. Alice couldn't see her, and neither one of us could cross the boundary to go get her. For a moment, I actually considered asking Charlie if he had any immediate plans to go visit Billy. Then I cringed as I realized Bella and Jacob weren't likely to spend their day of freedom with Billy. As I tried to picture what they were probably doing, each image grew progressively darker. A walk on the beach? That should be safe enough. Hanging out in his garage? It might bring back memories of times they had spent together when I'd been gone, but otherwise harmless. Riding their motorcycles? Dangerous. Although I knew she had ridden before, and Jacob had managed to keep her safe. Visiting with friends? That's where my panic kicked in, especially given the recent incident with the pack and my family. I couldn't be sure that one of them wouldn't see Bella as a threat one of the enemy. The mere sight of her could ignite their rage and cloud their judgment. Alice, will you wait at the boundary line until I get home? Of course. I'm on my way now. I'll take your car so it'll be there when you get back. Thanks. Let me know if you see any sign of her coming home. I will. And Edward, she's going to be okay. I know, I said, wishing I really believed it. She has to be. I'll see you soon? She asked when I trailed off into silence. Yeah, I'll be there as soon as I can. I ran faster than I had ever run before, and tried without success not to think about what I was running toward. Before I knew it, I was back in forks, and the reality of the situation truly set in. As I neared the boundary line, I saw Alice leaning up against the Volvo, her eyes clenched shut in deep concentration. I slowed down to a stop and waited for her to look at me. When she did, her eyes were strained and troubled. I felt instantly guilty, realizing how difficult it was for her, trying to watch for things she couldn't see. "'I'm sorry,' she said, frustrated and miserable. "'It's okay. I'm here now. Thanks for staying.' 
What are you going to do? Wait, I guess. What else can I do? If you're all right here, she started, still watching me apologetically. Yes, you should go home. I know how hard this is for you. Thanks, she smiled. I'll call you if anything changes. There was only one road from Forks down to La Push, and I sat right on the other side of the line, staring intently at it, silently pleading for Bella to hear me. Couldn't she feel what she was doing to me? As hard as I tried, I couldn't stop my mind from assuming the worst. One of those beasts could have phased the moment they saw her. The girl in love with the vampire? Part of the family who they believed was the reason they had been condemned to their fate? I tried to remind myself that at least Jacob was remarkably in control for one so new to this existence, and the nature of his thoughts had always shown me he truly believed Bella was always safe with himself and the pack, but while he would always work to portray them as the heroes in this story, hints of a darker truth, what even he knew they were capable of, had always crept in, and they solidified my fears. Time seemed to stand still as I sat, waiting, wondering.